polished uh, policy statements or proposals, but um, I kind of want to just um, walk you through, I guess, how I see things. Um, in the last two two year cycles that we budget for, uh, there have been some uh, staggering deficits because uh, beginning in 2008, this economy just went into free fall. And it was very important in the beginning of the 2009 session, the timing here gets confusing, but we still had to fix this deficit in the two-year budget we were in, when normally the legislature that period was looking ahead for the next two years. And so there were lots of cuts, and we had to cut something like $400 million out of the last five months of the 24-month budget year. And uh, it was very important to me that we kept the school year intact. That was the only thing that I had a huge priority for and, the, and not cutting a number of things. And there were four of us in the state senate at that time who kind of dug in on that. And as a result, in that school year, uh, no school days for the most part anywhere in Oregon were cut. And that was my uh, priority in the, in the next budget was uh, there will be some, some huge cuts, $4 billion. And uh, we cut about $2 billion out of, and this is out of a $15 billion budget thereabouts. Uh, we had about a billion from the federal government and a billion, a little bit less than that, from a tax increase that you might have heard about. <laughs> <laughs> and, but again, it was really important that we didn't cut days for a couple of reasons. One, when I was in the legislature in 2002 and 2003 when we had that recession, <clears throat> and Oregon schools did cut days. I think Hillsborough cut 17 days. And that made us nationally known. We were made fun of in the comics, Doomsbury. And Oregon lost its mojo. It really did. There's just nothing like cutting schools. Not being able to keep schools open it is worse than potholes. It's worse than uh, laying off um, firemen. It's, it's just something that is unacceptable, but yet we were doing that. And I just never wanted us to go through that again. So this 2008-2009 school year, we left intact. This last one that just completed, uh, we left intact. And I think, especially with this federal money that's going to be coming to the state, I hope, in the next uh, few months, this school year will be, for the most part, left intact uh, for most Oregon school districts. So that's three years running where, in spite of this terrible recession, it hit Oregon <coughs> harder than a lot of states, um, we didn't cut any school days, for the most part. And, uh, you know, I, I, I tell that to, uh, you know, groups like this and town halls, and finally one guy said, you know, really, that's our new standard, that we didn't cut any school days. And, and uh, you know, it, I suppose it doesn't sound all that impressive that we made out like that, but given, um, what we've gone through, it was really quite a feat. And it doesn't sound all that impressive, but um, nobody's really had to cut, you know, two weeks off their school year, in spite of what we've gone through. And that meant that other departments, other programs were cut more than they deserved, more proportionally. And, um, and that was very difficult. A lot of people in the legislature fought against that. Not everybody in the legislature loves schools as much as they say they do. So, um, what, one of the hardest places to cut, by the way, are uh, human services cuts. Because not only are you making uh, life more difficult for people whose lives are already difficult, but um, almost all of that money has federal match money attached to it. Two for one, usually. Uh, some low income seniors programs are five to one, or ten to one. So you're cutting a million dollars here, but you're going to lose, that means two million for the federal government is not going to flow into the state's economy. Those are very difficult cuts to make. So it is not easy to be an education advocate against those odds. But um, anyway, that's, that's where I am uh, this year. I still want to keep that priority. The problem is, is now that we're facing the $2.5 million deficit, uh, it's unlikely we'll have any more federal stimulus in that budget period. We're not, it's very unlikely we're going to raise taxes. And the economy doesn't seem to be improving at the pace it needs to be to keep things where they are. And trust me, we've looked under all the uh, cushions in the couch and returned all the bottles in the garage and uh, raided all the funds that 
I think we could legitimately raise in this biennium to keep things where they are. So um, that's what I know going into January. And uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that none of this by hook and by crook uh, sort of budget uh, making has been uh, without the help of teachers. And they can furlough days, paying more into their health benefits, and um, that's been really appreciated. And school districts using up the reserves, and there's been layoffs, and we have done this now three years in a row. And it's really nobody's fault. Nobody's screwing over schools or anything. In fact, schools in Oregon are better than they deserve to be given our tax code and our, our budget. And, um, but we're, we're right at the end now. And we really need this economy to recover. We really do need to be putting more people back to work. And uh, we're an income tax state. 90% all the bills in the state are paid by the income tax. And when people aren't working, you know, they're not paying taxes. So I saw a great presentation the other day on the importance of raising the average income as a way to getting back to where we are. We're now about 90% of the national median income is. And uh, Washington, by comparison, is 103%. California is about 105%. Idaho is at 90. We, we made it up to about 95, 96% in the 90s, and we've fallen back down. And uh, from an income standpoint, we're going to be more up to California, not down to Idaho. It is so uh, dramatic what that would do if we went from 90 to 95 percent instead of having a uh, two and a half million dollar deficit in our budget the next budget just a net increase would be something close to a 20 billion dollar surplus that's how important it is for uh, Oregonians to be making more money <coughs> and to be working so that's kind of what we're up against and um, I think there's still uh, a core group of people in the legislature who are going to fight to keep uh, uh, funding consistent with schools, um, but I think more than that needs to be done, and I know you've been talking about some of the legislation that would do uh, some work uh, within the margins and, and, and uh, teachers' programs and, and making teachers more effective than they are, and, and uh, I think there's there's some reorganization we can do within the, 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 the system. I've, I've been on this crusade to uh, cut back on uh, administrative supporting ESDs and to use that savings for K-12. And uh, I think we're close to doing it two years ago. And uh, I think just given the economics of the situation, we'll be forced to do it in this coming session. We had a bill that did pass the Senate and died in the House on the final day. So um, <clears throat> I guess the jury's still out on what happens to education in, in January. Part of what forecast we're going to have in about a week, August, what is it, August 26th, and uh, the cut that we would get from the federal government for this biennium. And if we know we don't have to put any more money into the budget in this biennium, then that will help spell out uh, what we need to do uh, in the following session. So that's a primer for what's coming up. I have a lot of people who I say, you know, Mark, you picked the wrong time to be in the legislature gone through not one but two recessions. You've got uh, conservatives beating you up, talk radio people beating you up. And I say, well, um, after I think about that, you look at Oregon's history and you think, well, first of all, Oregon was formed just before the Civil War, which is a, obviously a terrible time for everybody in this country. Oregon has weathered forest fires, floods, the Depression. Uh, it had a terrible history with uh, racism. Got other recessions, and every time Oregon and her citizenry have pulled back and gotten out of that stronger than they were before. So I don't think I picked a bad time to be in the legislature any more than you picked a bad time to be in public service. It's just that when time we're in public service at a time when Oregon needs good citizens to 